in only 10 years, the world would save $111 trillion if we all simply moved to renewable energy. A recent study in Europe says solar energy will become 10 times cheaper than gas within a pretty short period of time. Now, while that may be true, switching the world to renewable energy will actually cost $62 trillion. But it actually only takes six years to pay it back. And then we would basically have completely non-polluting energy, which would save us billions and billions of dollars every single year. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you guys. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Hey, just want to say a big thank you to everyone for subscribing to the channel. We've just hit 100,000, and clearly something's going on with the algorithms because we've been hitting more than a million views per week now for the last couple of months, and that's probably because you guys have subscribed and supported us. So, Big thank you to all of you who have done that. And a big thank you to all of you who have supported us on Patreon. Do you want to support us as well? I'll put a link in the description below. In the long term, it will be 10 times more expensive to operate gas-fired power stations than to build new solar PV capacity. The thing is, right, this study says that's for Europe. Imagine the difference in countries like Australia, southern parts of America. What about Africa? What about India? What about Southeast Asia? These are places with a lot more sun than Europe. Now, obviously, natural gas right now is very expensive in Europe. That's partly due to the massive decline in Russian gas exports. This is actually doing a good thing, though. It's doing us all a favor. Even though electricity is more expensive now as a result, it's meaning we're actually moving to renewable energy quicker than we would have otherwise. Electric says, Rystad Energy reports that spot prices on the Netherlands-based tidal transfer facility gas hub, the main reference for Western Europe, have risen from an average of 46 euros per megawatt hour in 2021 to $134 per megawatt hour so far this year. That's a huge increase. That's an increase of actually of 187%. However, more than 50 gigawatts of new solar and wind capacity are expected to be commissioned in 2023 along with 30 gigawatts of nuclear capacity currently undergoing maintenance that French multinational utility EDF is going to bring back online within the next few months. Here's the thing, though. Here is the thing. Rystead Energy forecasts that TTF prices will stabilize at around 31 euros per megawatt hour by 2030. 31 compared to the current price of 134. Now, even if it went back to the, the very good price of $46, it would still mean that renewable energy will be significantly cheaper than gas, even in the unsunny place of Europe. Now, yes, I know Europe does get sun in summer. Even then, I've traveled a fair bit through Europe. You guys watching in Europe, you're aware that, yeah, there's sun, but then there's sun. Europe, it's sun, but it's not the sun of Australia or Africa or Asia or many countries around the world. Now, the International Energy Agency is saying that that's three times more than the LCOE of new solar PV facilities for gas-fired plants that continue to be competitive with, re with renewable energy, and in particular with solar. Gas prices need to fall to 17 euros per megawatt hour, and carbon prices need to fall to 10 euros per metric ton. The study found that by 2028, new clean energy generation capacity installed using money that would otherwise have been spent on gas generation will reach 333 gigawatt hours enough to generate 663 terawatt hours of energy. That means that renewable power generation will be enough to replace forecast gas fired generation that same year. Gas is on the way out. Please don't invest in gas. I don't want you to lose your money. The thing is, though, this means that by 2050, new renewable energy capacity will be generating more than 2,000 terawatt hours. Now, yes, this is going to cost money. Mark Jacobson and his colleagues at Stanford University published a new study in the Journal of Energy and Environmental Science that claims that 145 of the world's nations could actually switch to 100% renewable energy in only a few years using the current existing renewable energy technology we have today. 
They say the world could make the switch over by 2035, but it should not do so by any event later than 2050, because otherwise it's going to cost itself trillions of dollars. And I'm not talking here about damage to the environment from carbon emissions. I'm simply talking about economic damage. Now, the researchers on this report looked at onshore and offshore wind energy, solar power, solar heat, geothermal electricity, and heat, hydroelectricity, and small amounts of tidal and wave electricity. And batteries were the most common electricity storage solution, with the team finding that no batteries with more than four hours of storage were actually necessary. Everyone's been saying four hours, and all reporters and researchers are saying that's all we actually need. The team said this, we do not need miracle technologies to solve these problems. By electrifying all energy sectors, producing electricity from clean, renewable sources, creating heat, cold, and hydrogen from such electricity, storing electricity, heat, cold, and the hydrogen, expanding transmission, and shifting the time of some electricity use, we can create safe, cheap, and reliable energy everywhere in every single country on the planet. doesn't matter where you live, how cold it is or how hot it is, it can work right now. In fact, the researchers said that switching to renewable energy will do one thing that would be nice to have. It will enable us to completely avoid blackouts. And more importantly than that, it will save us trillions of dollars. In fact, they said that in switching to clean renewable energy, the worldwide energy usage would go down by 56% immediately. Realistically, the truth is right now, we're wasting enormous amounts of energy. Why is that? And you're probably thinking, is this even true? Come on, this can't be true, right? Surely not. Surely we're not wasting 56%. Well, actually, we are. Those savings are attributable to the efficiency of clean energy over combustion systems, as well as the efficiency of an electrified industry. There would no longer be a need to explore for oil, coal, and gas, drill wells or dig new mines, transport oil to refineries, build and maintain pipelines, or truck petroleum to pr products to end users. Currently, this is done all over the world, right? Ships all over the world are traveling across the ocean vast distances, wasting enormous amounts of energy simply to transport energy from one place to another. Efficiency is something that people would, who drive electric cars would understand well. A gallon of gasoline has the equivalent energy of 33.7 kilowatt hours in a battery. Many electric cars today have a range of 300 miles or more, which means they can travel that far on the equivalent of three gallons of gasoline. A first generation Leaf had a 24 kilowatt hour battery, which means it was so efficient, it could go about 80 miles on the equivalent of about 0.8 of a gallon of gasoline. Now, here's the thing. A typical internal combustion engine is 20 to 25% efficient, which means three quarters of what you pay for is wasted as friction or heat. An electric car is around 90% efficient, depending on the model you buy. That's the average. So the question is, would you pay $100 for a suit that's only worth $25? That's what you're doing if you choose a gasoline powered vehicle versus an electric one. For people who fill their tanks with gasoline, they're wasting three quarters of the energy they're paying for. The problem is very similar when it comes to fossil fuel generated energy. The amount of energy wasted in the process is simply staggering, says Clean Technica. And yet we continue to generate electricity that way because it is what we're used to and we can't see another way. Jacobson, however, there is another way a much better way, and provides us with immeasurable, enormous, trillion dollar economic benefits. The cost of the entire world right now, moving to 100% renewable energy, would be an incredible $62 trillion. That's right now. In a few years time, it'll be cheaper than that, and then it'll constantly get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, as it has done almost every year for the last 30 years. However, the savings from switching the world to 100% renewable energy would be $11 trillion every single year. In other words, the payback would only take six years. Six years. The research said transitioning to 100% renewable energy in 145 countries decreases energy requirements massively 
and annual private and social costs while creating about 28.4 million more long-term full-time jobs than what will be lost. A 100% renewable energy economy uses only about 0.53% of the country land area with 0.17% for footprint and 0.36% for spacing. Now, you might be thinking, it's too hard, it's too expensive, and you know, it's all just too much. But when the objective is preserving the earth and saving trillions of dollars, how hard is too hard? How much is too much? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.